Welcome back to NRM 638, Python Scripting for ArcGIS Applications, Spring Semester 2015. This is an e-learning class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to work on simulating a spread of something. It could be a spread of disease. It could be a spread of an oil spill. It could be a wildfire spread. What you need to do is go to the Blackboard website and download this text file, randomspreadpolygons.txt. And once again, we'll copy and paste from our text file into the ArcPy window in ArcMap. And one of your application problems for this week's assignment will be simulating a spread of wildfire in a randomly selected black spruce polygon. So this is sort of the precursor to that application. Okay, so we start, we'll import random module, and then we'll create a personal geodatabase. I put it in C temp, and I called it test GDB. And then I'll set a variable my geos database to that location, and then set my workspace to that location. So I've got this string variable, my geodatabase, and it has the path and the geodatabase name. So next what we'll do is create a test feature class of polygons and there'll be 100 square polygons. So we create a polygon feature class called squares using the create fishnet tool and each polygon has a width and height of one and there's 10 rows and 10 columns. So we can look at these polygons in ArcMap. So here are our 100 test polygons each with a width and height of one. Okay, so next we'll use the add field geoprocessing tool and we'll add a field called test field. It'll be double precision. And then we'll use a data access cursor to fill in a value for test field for each of the 100 polygons. So we use an update cursor to access that test field. And then we give that test field a random number between one and 100 and then update the row. So now we should have for each polygon a value for the test field and it should be between 1 and 100. And indeed we do have between 1 and 100. If we right mouse click on our test field in statistics, the minimum is 1, the maximum is 99, and the count is 100. So next we want to create a layer of all the polygons that have a test field value above 66. So the first thing we do is create a query test field greater than the value of 66. And we use a search cursor with our query and we retrieve the object ID and add that to our list every time through the loop. And that will give us the list of all the object IDs that have a test field value above 66. So what's in this list? So that's what's in the list right now. So we could double check. Here's object ID of 1. It should have a value above 66. And it does. It's a value of 85. Here's 1, 3, and it has a value above 66. So then we'll use our query and we'll make a feature layer naming it burnable layer. So that would be all the polygons that have a test value above 66. So this burnable layer, every polygon in that layer has a value above 66. So we want to randomly select one of the squares from this burnable layer, and that will be our start fire square. So we use the random dot sample on our list, and we want a one sample, and that's going to be in this variable start object ID. So what's in that variable? So it's a list, and it's got one item in the list, and it's the object ID of 51, which was selected from our list of burnable squares. So then from this item, we'll make a query, object ID is equal to that value. And then we'll use that to create another layer, which will be where the fire starts. So that makes another layer called fire layer, and here, by default, it's colored purple. What we want to do is color it red. So we'll change the symbology. 
and color it some fire color and no outline. And then we want to save this symbology. So to save the symbology, right mouse click and save as layer file. And then you could put it wherever you want. I'm going to put it in C temp and I'll call it fire color. And then anytime we make a layer that's a fire layer, we can call up that file and color it. So for example, our original color might have been a lake color. What we could do is call up that fire color layer and apply it to that symbology. So we do that using the ArcPy Apply Symbology from Layer tool. Go out and get that fire layer and color it using ctemp firecolor.lyr and then hit enter and it colors it that color. Okay, so now we've got our fire starts here. It's a randomly selected polygon from our burnable layer. So now what we want to do is burn all the burnable layer squares that are adjacent. So basically, we're going to burn these squares. So we start, and we've got one polygon burning, so our burn count is equal to one. And we use the Select Layer by Location tool. So select from the burnable layer any polygon that touches this fire layer polygon. And what we could do is make our selection color under selection options, we'll give it some red color. So now it's selected, this was a polygon that touched the boundary of that polygon. So we'll update our fire count. So our fire count would be get the count of the selected polygons from burner, burnable layer. So what is our fire count right now? So it's two polygons that are selected from the burnable layer. And those two polygons are these two polygons. And then we'll just loop through and keep selecting polygons that are adjacent to the two selected polygons. So right now our fire count is two and our burn count is one. So while fire count is greater than burn count, we'll update our burn count to two and then we'll color code those two selected polygons, make feature layer. So take those two selected polygons and put them in the fire layer and then color them red. And then select from our burnable layer any polygon that touches the fire layer and then update our fire count. So basically we'll be going through this loop. So let me move this to the side and execute this loop. So basically it'll keep selecting those polygons until fire count is equal to burn count and then it stops. So now we've got this layer which represents pixels that burned this was the first randomly selected square from our burnable layer. And then the final thing is we can save this to a permanent feature class. So we use the copy features tool and we save it to burn polygons. And then we'll apply the symbology to these burn polygons. Enter. And then we'll clear our selection. And that clears all our selected features in the burnable layer. So now I could actually remove my burn, burnable layer and I could remove my fire layer because I have my burn polygons as a permanent feature class. So here are the squares that were burned from randomly selecting one of the many burnable squares and then basically finding the adjacent ones and burning them. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got the scripting assignment for you this week, and you have um, several applications, and you need to choose to solve two of those applications that you can choose from.